season of more. And we get to that season anytime there is a thirst and a desire within our hearts. Jesus teaching in the Beatitudes said, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I, I believe any time and at any stage in our life, whether we're on the mountaintop, coming down the side of the mountain, or in the valley, it can be a season of more. It's whether or not there is a thirst within our soul for more of what God has to offer to us. And the thing about it, friends, is that we will never ever get to a place uh, where we are fully satisfied until we awake in his likeness for every child of God, there will be a continuous season of more. The apostle Paul right into the church in Philippi, he talks about, he said, oh, that I might know him in the fullness of his power, fellowshipping with his suffering, because he, he knew, although Paul had had several visions and revelations from the Lord, which um, he said, if I should share them with you, think I'm getting out of my mind. Yet, the Apostle Paul, in those words, were actually implying that there is more to the Almighty God. So that's what we're here this morning to talk about, more from the Almighty God. And I'm glad and delighted this morning, Pastor Trout, for this invitation to share. And I want to bring, I know our scripture for this season at this time is Psalms 44, and we'll get there, but I want to ground us in the Word of God. All teachings, all spiritual teaching related to Jesus Christ must be grounded in the Scripture, must be grounded in the Word. Someone gets ready to teach us something, and it is not grounded in the Word. If we cannot seek the Bible and find it, then we got to say, mm -mm, this is not of God. So I want to ground us in the Word uh, this morning um, for some of us and this afternoon for some of you uh, from the Gospel of John, John the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. John said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. While this is not where, you know, my main point this morning I certainly want you to know this morning that there can be some things in our life that rob us of getting to the place called more, that rob us of getting to the place called sufficiency. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to kill and to destroy. So there can be some things in our lives this morning that are hindering us from getting to the place that is called more. We've got to learn to identify what are those um, stealers, what are those thieves that might be in our lives that are preventing us from getting to the place of abundance in the Lord Jesus Christ. So for some of us, it's the act, for some of us, it is the activities that we get involved in, right? For some of us, is uh, our job. For some of us, it may be um, a recreational hobby that prevents us from getting to that place of more. So we want to explore this morning, but I want you to recognize this morning that the assignment on Jesus's life was to bring his people to a place of abundance, a place of abundance living, not only spiritually, but naturally as well. And the question this morning for us, and I'm going to be asking a whole lot of questions this morning, are we ready for the place of abundance? Are we ready to allow Jesus to take us into abundance living? So let's ask this question. What is more for you this morning? What is more for you? Is more um, of the same, and that's dealing with quantity, or is more a different situation, and this may deal with quality? What is more for you? Depending on what's going on in our lives this morning, more is different for all of us. Some people are already at the state of blessings and prosperity. They're moving on with God. And for them, I want more of God. For others, we may be dealing with a whole lot of things in our lives. And more for us is God changed the situation. 
God shift the screen. God bring us into another script. So more for us depends on where we are this morning. I'm sure if we're living in a place of abundance where the blessings of the Lord is flowing on us, God, I need more of the same thing. For those of us, we may live it, be living with heartache, pain, disappointment, regrets. We may be in places where our health is failing. More needs a different situation. I'm certain the, the paralytic man who came to Jesus, more for him, I need to, my limbs. I want to be able to walk. So more means different situation for us this morning, depending on where we are. Now, when we go back to the Greek and we look at the, uh, the Greek meaning um, for the word more, um, there are two main meaning for that word in the Greek. One is super abundant, super abundant. That means um, that speak to quantity. Instead of 10, I want 20. Instead of 20, I want 30. So more, more in that sense speaks to quantity. Then there's another aspect of more that does, that does not necessarily deal with quantity. It deals with quality. My life is good, God, but there are higher heights and there are deeper depths in you. Praise the name of the Lord. My relationship may be good, Lord, but I want to have a stronger relationship with you. My relationship with my wife may be good, but I want to have a stronger relationship with you. So, so more, um, depending on where we are this morning, uh, means different things for those of us. Some of us, we're looking for quantity. For some of us, we are looking for quality. I want more of God. Others may be saying, I need some more dollars in my bank account. And trust me, there's nothing that says more has to be in one category only. We can both want more in quality as well as more in quantity. Amen. Can the church praise the Lord? Now, the question that I asked you, and I told you this morning, I'm going to have a lot of questions for you. The question that I asked you this morning is, what brings you to the place of more? What is it that takes you to that place where you say more? What is it that is going on in our life that says, Lord, I need more? Praise the name of the Lord. For As I said before, for some of us, it is different things. Different things brings us at different point in time in our lives for more. Praise God. But I want you to consider this morning, what is it that is in your life that is driving you to the place where you say, God, I need more. When you get down in prayer to pray and you say, God, I need more. What is it that is driving you to that place? For some people, more for them is driven by um, a consumer mentality. I need more of this. For others, it's them recognizing themselves and recognizing the full image of the Almighty God and seeing how short they are of the perfect model, of the perfect image that God has set for their lives. And based on that, God, I need more of you. So my question to us this morning, what brings us to the place in our life where we ask for more? For some of us, it is strategy and desperation. We are desperate. The situation is tragic. Perhaps we have lost a job. COVID has come in. The pandemic has come in. Our company is completely shut down. Our bank account is wiped out. And so our loss of the job has brought us to the place called more. For some of us, it may be desperation. We wake up each day and we cannot enjoy the beauty of our day because our lives, hallelujah to God, is covered in, in, in depression and, 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 and oppression. And it's at that place we say, God, I want more. I want more. So different things pull us to the place of more. But some of us, we feel like we're drowning. We're about to go down 
and we feel like we have been down nine times already and the 10th time there is no hope Kundo Boshayama, to come back up again praise the name of the lord but i want to say to you this morning there is hope for others of us it is pain and suffering that brings us to the place of more praise the name of the lord we have hurt too much we have suffered too long praise the name of the lord and something inside of us says god did not amen bring me into this world to live in a life of suffering god did not ah, i feel the holy ghost saints god did not bring me to a place where i lived throughout this entire life in pain and suffering praise god it really doesn't matter Praise God, what brings us to the place of more. As long as we know who it is that we are calling out to, who is it that we're looking to for more, praise the name of the Lord. And no, we're, we're living, amen, in different places this morning, different continents. And, um, you know, we certainly can't look to the government. The government has sent out here in the United States stimulus check, but some people haven't received. Some people are still waiting to receive. So, 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 so we can't look to the government for that. We've got to look to a bigger source. In fact, there are some things that has driven us to the place called more that government cannot fix. Your wife cannot fix it. Your, your church members cannot fix. Only God alone can, amen, fix those situations. Another thing that drives um, us to the place called more is brokenness. Brokenness naturally as well as brokenness spiritually. Poverty drives us to the place called more. Praise God. Hallelujah to God. Poverty drives us to the place called more. Many folks today saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, but they're down on their knees today, not because they haven't tried. They say, God, I need my meal for tonight. Morning has come. They have not had anything to eat. Or last week, they had to stand in a food line. So poverty, the, the emptiness of their cupboard has driven them to a place called more. I need more God. If you don't come through in this house, we're going to be foreclosed. If you don't come through in this house, God, our relationship will be broken up. Hallelujah to God. It really doesn't matter, friend, what drives us to the place called more. As, once, as long as when we get to the place called more, we will find the God who comes to give life and give it more abundantly. For others of us, failure drives us to the place called more. We have failed in a relationship. We have failed in our business. We have failed in our occupation. We have failed loved ones. We have told them that we would be there. And for some reason or the other, whether intentionally or unintentionally, we are unable to deliver, amen, our promise. And we look at ourselves and we say, Lord, when are you going to help me so that I can be a man or a woman of my words? Lord, when are you going to help me so that when I speak, oh God, I will rise up to fulfill that which I commit myself to? So failure drives, amen, some people to the place called more. Not all things, amen, the, you know, um, that are bad, amen, cause us to come to the place called more. For some of us, it's success. God has blessed us. We once were lost in sin. Hallelujah to God. And we have turned our lives over to God and we have seen the blessings of the Almighty God. Hallelujah to God. I remember when I first got saved, bless the name of Jesus, got the Holy Ghost. And I went back to church probably a week or so later on. And uh, at that point in time, I said to somebody, why someone did not tell me before now of the sweetness and of the richness of the Almighty God? 
Hallelujah to God. When I began to enjoy the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost, when I began to enjoy the songs of Zion, when I began to enjoy the words of the Almighty God, I wanted more, praise God. Not because I was busted and disgusted, but because I'd come to the fountain that never runs dry. I'd come to the place that my soul really longed for and I needed more. For some of us, you know, we have experienced academic success and we want more. We got the bachelors, but we want to go on to the masters. We got the masters and we want to go on to the PhD. Praise the name of the Lord our God. For some of us, amen, we had a son, but we want a daughter. We want more. For some of us, we were entry-level staff. Praise the name of the Lord our God. But we desire in our heart, God, I'm more than just an entry-level person in this company. I want more. So there are different things that drives us this morning to the place called more. Now I want to ask another question. And that other question is, what prevents you, what prevents us, the children of God, from asking for more? What prevents us? What hinders us? What holds us back from asking for more? I'd like to put two reasons to you this morning. Of course, there are several, but I just want to focus on two reasons this morning. The first is um, Hosea, God's prophet, one of the minor prophets of the Old Testament. He says, in Hosea 4, verse 6, he said, my people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to put to you that pride, pride stop us from showing our vulnerability. Pride stop us from showing our needs. Pride stop us from showing our pain. Pride stops us from confessing. And when we get to that place of embargo, praise God, then more stop. The faucet is turned off. Lack of knowledge, like I said before, is one of the reasons that stops us from asking for more. We don't know that there's more, so we don't ask. We don't know that there's a thing called abundance. We don't know that a Christian can live without, amen, uh, ha having to, you know, wonder where my next meal is coming from. We don't know that a Christian can have a refrigerator full of food. So lack of knowledge then prevents us from asking for more because we don't know. Well, guess what? Through this conference, Pastor Trout has brought us together to let us recognize and realize that there is more. So not having more should not be because we don't know that there is more in God. The pride piece, all of us have got to deal with that. All of us have got to empty ourselves to God and let God know that we're depending on him. And without him, we'll never get to the place called more. Can somebody praise the Lord? Ours then, if the lack of knowledge is one of the reasons why people don't have more, don't realize that there is more to us, the saints of the living God, every one of us that's in the church house, every one of us who have been born again, it is our responsibility to let others know that there is more, is to tell them that there is more. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to live below your privilege, praise the name of the Lord our God. You don't have to be poor in order to be a child of God. Hallelujah to God. You don't have to look busted and disgusted for holiness to live on the inside of you. It's our responsibility to let them know that Jesus came, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Get into our scripture, our key scripture from Psalms 44. In Psalms 44, verse 1, and, um, you know, theologians are um, not certain as to who wrote this psalm, but many have ascribed it to David. But here's what 
verse 1 in Psalms 44 says. It said, we have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days and in the times of old. I want to put to all of us in this gathering today, this telephonic gathering, this virtual gathering, that the fathers have a responsibility to let the people of God know that there is more. And I don't want us to think this morning of fathers only in terms of the male gender. I have out there some points as to our father, the ones who are knowledgeable. If you are knowledgeable that there is more, we've got a responsibility to tell somebody that there is more. If you are, have the experience that there is more, we have a responsibility to share that experience with others that there is more. Praise the name of the Lord. We must tell, we must broadcast that there is more. He came so that we might have a life and that we might have it more abundantly. We gotta tell the world that you don't have to live in desperation. Hallelujah to God. One morning, Pharaoh got up disturbed by his dream. Amen. Hallelujah to God. So, you can't lend your earphone. So, one morning, Pharaoh got up disturbed by his dreams. None of his magicians could satisfy his need for more knowledge and his need for an interpretation of the dreams that he had. But one of his servants said, while I was in prison, there was a man there who interpreted dreams and they sent for Joseph, praise the name of the Lord our God. And Joseph, through the gifting and the wisdom of God upon his life, was able to bring Pharaoh into the place called more. This is what your dream means. And this is what it means for the land. Somebody tell the Lord, hallelujah. More than is our responsibility, our responsibility to tell. To tell what? To tell what I call God's stories. Everything that God has done in your life is a God story that needs to be told. Praise the name of the Lord. What are God's stories? God's stories are what God has done. God's stories are about what God can do. God's stories are about what God can do. And in this season and in this time of the pandemic, people need to know and people need to hear what God has done, what he has done. He said, our fathers have told us what God did for them on the other side. You and I, we have a God story. Everyone look at me, looking at me today um, in this camera, praise the name of the Lord. You've got a God story to tell, praise the name of the Lord. You've got a knowledge of the power of the Lord, what God is able to do. Even if he hasn't done it for you, you are a believer and you believe in the power of God. You believe that God can do it, praise God. You have a story to tell about what God will do because it is written in his words and you are a believer. It's our responsibility to tell. The fathers told their children their God story. In Psalms 44, verses 2 through 3, he said, God drove the heathens out of the land. He did afflict them and he didn't cast them out. For they got not the land in their possession by their own sword. Neither, neither did their own arm save them, but by thy right hand and thine arm, and the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor upon them. That was their God story. And Israel was commanded to rehearse this God story to their children. Tell it to your children. And tell your children to tell their children and their grandchildren because the God stories of what God has done is one of the things that stimulate us as believers to ask for more. What was their God story about? Their God story was simply this. God brought us into the land. We're here in Canaan. Not because we had a military army, not because we nuclear bomb out Pharaoh, praise the name of the Lord. We're here in the land, not because we were a military giant and we wipe out the Amorites. 
and the Perizzites. No, God brought us into the land. We're here into this land because God cleared this land for us. While we are still slaving in Egypt, God was using these heathens to build homes for us, to build wells for us, to plant fields for us. That's their God story. He said, it is God who has planted us here. Friends, when we hear what God has done, there will be a desire in our heart. God, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. God, if you did it back in Moses' day, your power is not short today. I want more. I want to see you in my circumstances and in my situation. We asked a question this morning. I told you I was going to ask you a lot of questions. What are the objectives of God's stories? God's stories have an objective. God's story have objectives, rather. Here in Psalms 44, here's what um, the psalmist continued to write. That thou art king, O oh my God, command deliverance for Jacob. For through thee we will push down our enemies. Through thy name we will tread them under that rise against us. Simply put, our God stories, if they, if when we tell our God stories, if when we preach from the pulpit, people can see Jesus as king, we have not done a good job. When we have, tell, when we have told our God story of how God blessed us with that new car, People must realize that God is a blesser and he can provide a new cars and more than that, praise God. If you tell it in a way where you get all the glory, you have not done justice to God's story. God's story should empower us, rely on him. We should be empowered. It's a true V, we will push down our enemies. After we have told our God story, somebody should be empowered to believe God. Somebody should get up and be able to say, I can. Somebody should be able to get up and say, I will. Why? Because of your testimony, because of you sharing your God story. Hope I'm not getting too happy here. God's story should lead people to a place where they totally rely on him. Hallelujah to God. So the objective of our God stories, and I just want to summarize this. One, they should be designed to see Jesus Christ as king. They should be designed to empower the people of the almighty God. And they should be designed to get people to a place where they totally rely on him. So, Coming to a close. So the push for more then. The push for more. The push for more then is not about your efforts. Not about your efforts at all. The push for more is about your reliance on God. Hallelujah to God. It's about your trust in God. It's about your belief in God. It's about your faith. It's about your hope. It's about your belief that God can take you through COVID-19. Praise the name of the Lord our God. You can get the best medicine. You can have the best doctor in the land and still not survive. So the push for more is always, I want to get to that place where I'm totally reliant on God through thee. Not through our strength, not through our army. Through thee, we will push down our enemies. Our God stories are designed to get people to a place where they are totally reliant on God. Totally hearing from God. Because it's in that place of reliance that God can move in our lives fully. It is in that place of reliance where we rest fully in the arms of the Almighty God, where we're trusting in Him. We have tried everything else and everything else failed. We have come to the place where we know that we've got to rely on God. It is at this juncture that God works best. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. And I know that God, amen, 
One of the things that God is teaching all of us through this COVID place is getting us to a place where we've got to rely on him. Not the government, not the WHO, not any international organization, but totally on him. That's the purpose of the God story. That's the purpose of our testimony. Friends, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Somebody tell the Lord, hallelujah. As I come to close, I want to share with you Peter's story. In John chapter 21, after Jesus had died, Peter looked around at all of his brethren. Peter said to them, our master has died. I don't know what's going to happen to us. Peter said, I go fishing. I'm going back to the trade that I was called from. I'm going back to the place that was comfortable for me. My daddy was in that trade. Hallelujah. My brother was in that trade. In fact, perhaps everybody that he knew was in that trade. He said, I'm, I'm, go I'm going back to that. He was gone, but Peter still desired more. And Peter, amen, sought for more in the ways that he knew how. Peter started relying on himself. Look at what Peter said. I go fishing. Look at that. I go fishing. I'm calling back on the knowledge that I have. I'm calling back on the tricks of the trade that I know. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm calling back on everything that I know. I go fishing. I'm reverting back to the things that I once do. I'm reverting back to the things that once put food on my table. I go fishing. What happened? You know the story. Peter worked all night long. The result was nothing. What that tells us, friends, when we get to a place of more and we begin to rely on ourselves, we're guaranteed to come up with nothing. But I want to shift you to that place where when you desire more, it's not a reliance on yourself, but it's a reliance on God. The Bible said here that Jesus showed up on the shores of the Sea of Tiberias. And he saw his disciples coming back in, expert fishermen. Granted that they had been out of the trade for three and a half years, but these were expert fishermen. Came in, coming in rather, with nothing. Jesus spoke a word to them. Somebody said word, somebody said word. Hallelujah to God, hallelujah to God. Because if you're gonna get to the place called more, there must be a reliance on the word of God. Hallelujah to God. If you're gonna get to the place of being sufficient, of super abundant, of superior, there must be a reliance on the word of God. Jesus said a word to them, cast your net on the right side of the ship. I want you to note this. It was the same boat that they've been out with all night long. It was the same water body. It was the same that it was the same set of fishermen. What changed was that Jesus showed up on the sea and he uttered a word, cast your net on the other side. Oh God, I know you have fished all night long. You came up empty, but there's still a need in your soul for more. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah to God. I know you went out to sea on your own direction. I know you went out to sea based on your own guidance, but here in the dawn, praise God, I've got a word for you. Cast your net. Rely on my words. Now, for them to get to that place, a lot of things had to change within them. They certainly could have objected. We've been at this all night long. We know this lake. We have been to every por portion of this lake. We have used the correct bait. But our friends, I tell you, if you're going to get to more, you need to drop, amen, your ways of doing things and begin to rely on the Almighty God. When they threw their net, as Jesus has said, the difference here was a reliance on the word of God. 
Can I tell the church this morning, scattered wherever we are in the UK, in the Caribbean, in the US, can I tell you this morning that when we get to the place where we rely on the word of God, because we have heard, our fathers have told us, our pastors have told us, our missionary have told us, they have told us about the, the goodness of God, they have told us about the power of God. When we get to that place where we rely on the word of God, same, same sea, same sea of Tiberius, and I am speaking to somebody this morning. You don't have to move in order to get more. Keko Shababa. You don't have to sell the house in order to get more. You don't have to seek another job in order to get more. All you need is stop your fight. Through you, we will push down our enemies. It wasn't our sword that brought us here. It wasn't our sword that brought us into the land. It was you. When you get to that place of reliance on God, we will find the more that we need. Last slide. The push for more then will take you beyond your limits. You don't want anybody to give you what you already got. You already got it. Praise the name of the Lord our God. But for some of us this morning, there are some things that we need that we don't have, that we can't provide for ourselves. Try as might as we want. Go to school, get 10 PhDs. Have some of the rich people of the world give you millions of dollars and you still can't get it. All of us need to begin to get to our beyond. And that place is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to God. That place of more is in Jesus Christ. That place of more is when your problems come your way and you can say hallelujah. When people look at you and say, how did you make it through that? With a smile on your face. Oh, glory to God. Was because God took you to the place called more. Can I just say in closing to each and every one of us, let God take you to your beyond beyond yourself, beyond your ideas, beyond your thoughts. Let him take you there. And when you allow him to take you there, you fish all night long, you've been up and down the sea, you know the sea, you know the tricks. But if you will respond to his words, it will take you to your beyond. It will take you to the place of more. I pray this morning that I've said something that challenge your heart and your spirit to desire more. I pray that I've said something this morning that will cause you to look up, that will cause you to believe that the God who has brought you where you are today is able to bring you through. I pray that I've said something this morning that will cause you to share your God story. Your grandchildren need to know how God brought you over. Hallelujah to God. When you bring friends over and they look around in your home and they survey your home, hallelujah to God. They need to hear your God story. They need to hear how God brought you out of poverty, how God brought you out of brokenness and has given you more. Praise the name of the Lord. When they look at your relationship with your wife, with your children, praise the name of the Lord our God. And they said, we admire your relationship. We admire, amen, the togetherness of your family. Praise God. They need to hear a God story that, amen, that will tell them, that will inform them of the places that God has brought you through. There is more, friends, but it is Amen. When we come to the place of reliance on God, that God will give us more. Be blessed today in the Lord. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let there be a filling in your soul. I prophesy a filling in your soul. I prophesy, amen, hallelujah to God. The disturbance will be over in your soul. I prophesy that God will bring you to a place called more. And when you get there, tell your God story to somebody else. God bless you in Jesus' name.